Hey guys, back with another video, and today we got another AC News video for you guys today. Um, the last AC News was a big one, as we had so many uh, NFL news across across the land of the National Football League. Um, so much free agency and things happening. But now we shift over to the NFL Draft um, the draft is next Thursday as I'm recording this. I'm recording this on, uh, Saturday, whatever, whatever day it is. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm actually super pumped for the draft. Uh, the class looks stacked this year and I thought I'd do a mock draft on AC News. I, you know, I usually don't, usually don't just do a mock draft or something like this on AC News. That's going to take the whole episode, but I mean... You know what? Let's let's do it for the culture. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna jump straight into the mock draft. Not a uh, little time to waste here. A uh, lot of great players in the draft this year. We start at number one with the Chicago Bears. Um, I mean, there's no other option here but Caleb Williams. I just I don't think there is. Um, Caleb Williams has to be the guy here. Uh, has been touted as the number one quarterback in this class uh, ever since he won Heisman over a year ago. He fell off kind of in his second year, but that's just because of his bad team play. Um, you know, he's getting a lot of hate, you know, just for being himself. But either way, he's still a, a generational talent. And uh, will he be the one to save the Chicago Bears franchise, though? That's that's the question. Uh, I, I doubt it. I, I, I doubt it. Um <laughs> They they they're just cursed with quarterbacks, dude. They're they're never gonna find the guy because they're they're the Chicago Bears. Um, so hopefully the Packers can continue the winning streak next season and go twelve and zero over them. I'm gonna jinx it. All right, Bears. Uh, Caleb Williams out of USC. I don't think that's any surprise to anyone. Uh, getting to the Washington Commanders. Uh, I think they probably definitely go quarterback as well. Uh, the question is stuck between two guys at this point. A lot of people are going one way. A lot of people are going the other way. But the way I'm going is Jaden Daniels, another Heisman winner here. Uh, Jaden Daniels out of LSU, um, another great quarterback that LSU has produced. Um, and I think he just fits better in this Washington Commanders offense. I think he's going to be the guy that uh, – I forgot who their new coach is, but I think he's going to be the guy that the commanders like. Um, hold on. I f forgot. Uh, I forgot his name. I don't remember. Commander's uh, head coach. Dan Quinn. That's right. Oh, man. Okay, maybe not. Maybe Drake Mays the guy for them. I don't know. No, no, no. I'm staying with Daniels. Uh, da Daniels has to be the guy here, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, coming off an incredible season, uh, winning Heisman. And he can do it with his legs. He can do it with his arms. Uh, obviously, he had a lot of weapons out there in uh, in LSU with Malik Neighbors and uh, Brian Thomas Jr., who are both easy first-round wide receivers, in my opinion. Uh, but... He's going over to the Commanders, which I think he has. A, I think he still has a chance there to have some weapons. You know, you have Terry McLaurin if he even stays, and then Jahan Dotson who broke out last year. So I think this is a perfect spot for Jaden Daniels, and I think the Commanders take him. At number three, you have the New England Patriots, um, and they they could shock everyone and go receiver. Uh, I think it'd be hard not to go receiver in the spot they're in, but I think. With one quarterback taken in Jane Daniels, I feel like with the Patriots here, you got to take Drake May, quarterback out of North Carolina. Um, obviously, trading or yeah, did they trade or yeah, traded Mac Jones and doubt Bailey Zappi's going to be the starter. So you got to bring someone in. It's almost a hundred percent likely that they're going to get someone. 
Uh, I honestly think these two will be flipped. I think it could easily be Drake May first at the Commanders, and then uh, Patriots take Jane Daniels. Uh, but I'm just a little less high on Drake May, and I know everybody else is. Uh, I, I already see him being the, the Zach. I'm not comparing him to Zach Wilson, but he is um, a guy who had an incredible pro day, had, you know, just popped off at the pro day and uh, has boosted up all draft boards, although he's kind of been the, the number two guy for a while next to Caleb Williams uh, after after this season. I mean, if you go over to my TikTok, I had him going number two for a while. Um, so... Yeah, gotta be gotta be Drake May here out of North Carolina. Can make some great throws, uh, almost Justin Herbert Herbert esque in a way. So Drake May over to New England. Uh, he just fits the mold of a Patriots quarterback. I don't I don't know what to tell you. Uh, next up, you got the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, I def definitely don't think they take QB here. That's for sure. Um, and they need receivers. They need receivers badly. They lost their best in Hollywood Brown. And after Hollywood Brown, who do you even have? I mean, that's the question. So you got to take receiver. You got to take Marvin Harrison Jr. out of Ohio State. For a long time, I had the Patriots taking him just because the Patriots they needed a receiver badly. Uh, but so do the Cardinals. And I think I would be shocked if Marvin Harrison fell after this point I would be blown away if he fell out of the top five with uh, a lot of teams needing receivers uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. obviously son of Marvin Harrison uh, Colts legend um, and Harrison had a great career at Ohio State uh, didn't end how he wanted it obviously losing to Michigan but Marvin Harrison Jr. I think uh, one of the best receivers we've seen out of a draft in a long time uh, so Harrison's going to be the guy here for Cardinals taking MHJ. Next up, you got the Los Angeles Chargers, and I think they're another team that needs receiver badly. Obviously losing Keenan Allen, uh, losing Mike Williams. Their best guy right, right now is, uh, what, what's his face? I don't even remember his name. That's that's sad. Uh, the guy, the rookie last year who just dropped everything, who I was really high on, by the way. Um, one sec. Uh, okay, so it really doesn't want me to show you. Show me. Uh, Quentin Johnston. That's r Johnston. That's right. Um, and then obviously they have uh, Josh Palmer. But besides that, who's Justin Herbert going to throw to? Like, you bring in a new head coach, obviously, in Jim Harbaugh, and I think Harbaugh... Uh, definitely an offensive-focused guy, so he's going to want to bring in a guy uh, and a guy like Malik Neighbors, wide receiver out of LSU. Uh, I think this is an easy pick here. He's easily wide receiver two next to MHJ. Um, made some great plays at LSU uh, alongside his quarterback, of course, Jaden Daniels, who went earlier. Uh, neighbors, I think he's shifty. He can catch the ball great. I mean, I, I hope so. He's a receiver. Um, he's a great route runner. Um, so I think this is an easy pick here for the Chargers and uh, taking Malik Neighbors. Um, next up, you got the New York Giants. Uh, and you could easily argue QB here. You easily could. Um, I think it's so hard, though, when you're the Giants to lose a lot of your offensive pieces. Uh, obviously losing Saquon, who was a threat in the receiving game, uh, but they still haven't found their identity with a wide with one a wide receiver. One they haven't found that yet, and a guy who has made himself clear as a wide receiver one in his c college career that's Rome Adunze out of Washington. Dubs down, of course, but I can't deny the talent that Adunze has. Uh, he is a red zone threat like crazy, can make any catch in the end zone um, when his quarterback is actually throwing him the ball accurately. <laughs> God, he sucked in the national championship, Michael Penix, but that's for another talk for another day. Um, no, Adunze, though, great player. Uh, almost like a Devontae Adams, like I said, he's a red zone threat. He can make any catch when it comes to the 20-yard plus Yard line. I can't speak. Oh my gosh. 
Odunze out of Washington here. I think this is a little high for him. I think he could I think he could drop a couple picks down here, but I think he's still a great player. Uh everybody wants him to fall to sh- 9 to Chicago. Uh so you play with Caleb Williams, that'd be nuts. That'd be ridiculous. I'd be upset. But uh no. I think the Giants um Giants could go tackle, but outside of tackle they don't got really many options besides uh receiver here, so think you take the best on the board uh because there's a lot of good receivers in this draft class that's the thing there's a lot of good receivers in this class so they're either gonna all fall or they're gonna go early and i'm gonna say they're gonna fly off this board um and uh yeah give me a dunze um next up you have the tennessee titans and a team that honestly I, another team that easily could have taken Odunze if he had gotten here. But at this point, I don't think you take uh, a, a wide receiver because that's not really a great one for a while. Um, and then you could go uh, corner, but with an incredible tackle class this is, uh, you've got to take the best on the board here when you need one really badly. I mean, they've lost a lot of their guys. Um, so I think you take Joe Alt out of Notre Dame, offensive tackle. Um, there's a lot of positions that are stacked in this class. Receiver, uh, you could say quarterback. Uh, receiver, corner, uh, tackle. This is a edge rusher. This is a heavy, heavy class and all those. And I think you'd be stupid if you're the Titans to let him fall any farther than he already has because I think he can easily be a top five pick, uh, maybe even top four, depending on what team wants to go where. Uh, he's a great player. He's an incredible player at his position. Uh, he can move for a tackle. And I think uh, get get a guy like Joe Alt and, you know, your p- running back position is kind of up in the air now that Derrick Henry's gone. I mean, it's not up in the air because you know you're going to have Tajay Spears. you got to get someone to protect him. you got to get someone to protect Will Levis, and Joe Alt's going to be that guy for you. So... Give me Joe Alt. Next up, you got the Atlanta Falcons at eight. Um, another team where it's like, honestly, they've had an incredible offseason bringing in Kirko Kirko Thuggins. Uh, their receiver class is now stacked. Um, and running backs good. Like, dude, like you just need to focus on that defense and you can make things happen. Uh, linebacker or corner, and I think they go corner here. And I honestly think. I don't think he's the best on the board, but I think he's going to be the guy that NFL teams are going to fall most in love with, and uh, and that's Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo, uh, cornerback, of course. Um, a guy from a small school like Toledo has shown why he can be uh, a top a top player at his position. Uh, been great there in Toledo, and. Um, yeah, I think I think he fits the Falcons' build. Uh, obviously, they brought in a new head coach. They brought in Raheem Morris, right? I'm pretty sure they're they're the ones who brought in Raheem Morris. Let me check. Let me check. Yeah. Oh wait. Yes. Yes. Uh, and he's obviously a very defensive focused coach. So I think bringing in a guy like Quinion Mitchell in year one at head coach is going to shift this defense a lot and make them honestly a contender in the weak NFC South next year. So give me Quinion Mitchell. Next up, you got the Chicago Bears again. This is their regular pick. Obviously, the first overall pick is the Panthers pick, but because the Panthers suck um, and they're stupid and they're the worst. (laughs) No, this is their regular pick. uh, And... They uh obviously taking Caleb Williams at one. You gotta get some help for Caleb as their defense has played great last year. So you gotta work on that offense some more and you gotta get Caleb some help. Obviously, receivers like Odunze falling off uh or going on the board um kind of limits your options. So I think you gotta take offense to tackle here as uh Bears have struggled with that. So I think you take Tylee's Fuaga out of Oregon State. Um big tackle and um has played great there at OSU, you know, Pac-2 represent. Um, Fuaga, another great player at his position. I think there's definitely a drop-off when it comes to tackle in, in this class, but he is, uh, I think, second best easily. And bringing him in to protect Caleb Williams, 
dude, Caleb, he should have time back there if he gets a guy like Tylese. Um, so, yeah, Bears, Tylese Fuaga. I don't know if I'm saying his first name right. Tylese? Tylese? Tylese. Tylese. I don't know. Fuaga. Um... Number 10, you got the New York Jets, New Jersey Jets, whatever you want to call them. Obviously, coming off of a disappointing season as Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Um, now, you could easily take tackle here, but with Fuaga getting taken, I think it's kind of hard to. So, I think you focus on the defense some more. Uh, obviously, Quinnen, Quinnen Williams hasn't been the most healthy, hasn't been able to stay on the field. So, you got to get a second guy next to Quinnen, and you bring in a guy like Johnny Newton out of Illinois. Jer- Jer- it's Johnny Newton, Jerzon Newton, however you want to say his name. Most people call him Johnny because it's just easier because, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Jerzon going over the Jets here. I think he fits a Robert Sala defense well and um, got to get after those quarterbacks in the AFC East with uh, with Josh Allen and uh, Tua, whatever his name is. Um, yeah, Johnny Newton here to the Jets, building that defense up even more in those new jerseys that are, people are like, oh, they're just the same. They're just the same. No, they're not. They're, one of them's the same. One of them's the, the white ones are the same, but they're just switching it to their regular jerseys now. But they got the green ones and the black one, those black ones. (sighs) Ah, nice. I'm glad they switched over from... Not having their name on the... Dude, what is it with teams now? The Lions did it with their New Jerseys. What is it with teams putting their name, like the name of the team on the... Above the number? Like, I don't understand, dude. What? Why? Why? Whatever. Um, yeah. Jets. Johnny Newton. Uh, next up, you got the Minnesota Vikings. Um, and the Vikings... There's a lot of options here, but with Sam Darnold being your quarterback right now, I think it's hard not to take quarterback, and I think it's not. I think it's hard not to take national champion J.J. McCarthy. Um, I hate this pick because these analysts are so high on on J.J. and I'm like, oh, I see where this is going already. This is this is bad. This is bad. Um. I'm not hating on J.J. I think he's a great quarterback. I think he he made a lot of great plays at Michigan. Uh, But I just... It'd be like taking Stetson Bennett last year in the first round. Would it, though? No, it wouldn't. J.J.'s a lot better of an athlete than than Stetson was. Um, But J.J., like the Drake May, like the Zach Wilson, had one crazy pro day throw. And, oh, my God, he's the best quarterback of all time. Everyone needs to calm down. But either way, I think I think this is what the Vikings need to do here as they need to bring in a guy next to Sam Darnold because is Sam Darnold really going to be your guy? No, he's not. He's not. Uh, and you got to get someone new in there. And J.J. McCarthy has to be that guy, obviously. Play with a lot of talent around him at Michigan. Uh, and bring in him and, you know, get J.J. a quarterback, get... Aaron Jones, a quarterback. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, Aaron Jones is probably going to have a lot of rep work because that's all JJ knows how to do. Hand the ball off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the JJ hate, but dude, Blake Corum averaged like 150 yards and three touchdowns a game. What do you want me to say? <sighs> God. All right. And yet, Blake Corum's not going first round, obviously, because he's a running back, but. You hate to see it. Um, yeah, Vikings, JJ. Uh, next up, we got the Denver Broncos. Uh, they could go in a lot of different directions here. Um, but I think you got to focus on the defense. Uh, you could go quarterback, but with McCarthy off, it's hard to. You know, a lot of people are high on Penix, obviously. A lot of people are high on Knicks. I'm more high on Knicks than Penix. I think Knicks is a great player, and I think he can become a great starting quarterback in the NFL someday. I think he's the most NFL-ready out of most of these quarterbacks in the class, but I just doubt he'll go first round. So with J.J. off, I think the Broncos have to take defense here. Uh, They lost a lot of guys in the offseason. Obviously lost Bradley Chubb uh, at the end of last year or whatever. And then 
They lost, uh, I think they lost like Josie Jewell. Couple, they lost a lot of guys. Um, so they need to work on that that linebacking edge area. So I think you take the best edge rusher, in my opinion, on the board, and that's Dallas Turner out of Alabama. Um, this dude was a monster at Alabama. Uh, he was there for years, and he he's he's disgusting. And I think you put him in on a Broncos on a Broncos defense. I think he's going to make some quarterbacks. I think he's going to transition perfectly over to the NFL and. He's a great player, and I think the Broncos, edge rusher, a position of need. I think you got to take the best on the board, and in my opinion, that is Dallas Turner out of Bama. So give it to him. Next up, you got at number 13, uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, another team that could go in a couple positions. You know, you thought for a while quarterback, but obviously, you know, AOC played fine last year, and then they brought in Gardner Minshew, so I think that'll definitely be the quarterback battle next year. So I don't, don't definitely don't think it's quarterback now. Um, so I think you work on the offense. The offensive line has struggled for years now. Uh, you know, Colton Miller hasn't really been able to stay healthy, and I don't even know if he's on that team anymore. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Um, so I think you take. Another offensive tackle out of the Pac-12, and that's Troy Fautanu from Washington. UW dubs down once again. Uh, but he made Michael Penick's life easy, dude. He made his life just incredibly easy for Penix to just chuck up bombs and throw interceptions. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, it was a struggle. It was a struggle to watch uh, the Apple Cup this past year as... Dude, the, literally the prior week before the Apple Cup, Brennan Jackson, RJ Stone, all those guys were getting past Colorado's offensive line because obviously their offensive line sucked, but they were just having a field day. And then they go into Seattle the next week and uh, have have a struggling time and just can't get to Penix. And Fatanu is one of those reasons. Um Obviously, another another Pac-12 guy, so a guy I've watched for years and has played great there, uh, especially ever since Penix got there. Um, so, uh, yeah, got to be Troy Falatano. I think uh could be a great player in this Raiders offense. Obviously, Raiders got Antonio Pierce now as their full-time head coach. I think Pierce uh, can turn possibly turn this team into a, a great, a great, great team uh, if – uh, they do the right things, and I think offensive line is where they need to look first. So, give them Falatanu. Next up, you got the New Orleans Saints at number 14. Uh, you could go a couple ways here. Uh, you could go defense, but I think it's hard not to go wide receiver just because, I mean, dude, Michael Thomas is, like, I don't even think he's on the team anymore. Olave's never in the game anymore. They need they need a guy, and uh, I think you take a number two guy to a number one guy, and I think you take Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. I think this is a bit of a reach, not going to lie, bit of a reach. I don't think Thomas goes this high, but I think if you put him in an offense like the Saints, which the Saints' offense has always been unique, um, even, even with uh, – you know, their current head coach, which I I doubt he even stays after next year, dude. Uh they they need a replacement at head coach. Uh they haven't had something since Peyton and Breeze. Um uh, but you start with the wide receiving core. Yes, they have Olave, but I you know, Rashid Shahid has improved a lot ever since having to be the number one guy. But you can't just you can't just force a guy to be the number one guy. You got to get pieces around him to possibly see who really can be the number one guy. Um, and Thomas has always been the number two out there in LSU, but um, can definitely possibly be a, a number one, depending on how things work out. So give him Brian Thomas Jr. I think it's a little high once again, but I think this could be honestly a steal, uh, depending on how things look after next year. So... Brian Thomas Jr. Um, now we got uh, the number 15th overall pick. And it's going to be the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, they, I think they have to go corner here. Uh, obviously, their offensive side looking good. 
uh, receivers. They got them locked down there uh, with Pitt- Pittman resigning and then AJ uh, uh, AR uh, AR fifteen or AR five, whatever you want to call them now. Um, but uh, yeah, I think you got to focus on the defense. Uh, they I think they lost a couple guys. Uh, I mean, they did resign what's his face who had like a ton of picks last year. Uh, hold on. Bear with me here. Uh, defensive. Hold on. Hold on. Bear with me. Bear with me. Um, Kenny Moore. That's right. Kenny Moore had a great year last year. Um, but I think you got to get another guy back there. So I think you take Cooper DeGene, cornerback out of Iowa. Uh, I think it'd be hard not to take a guy like Nate Wiggins, though. You also have Tarion Arnold, who I think, in my opinion, is the best cornerback in the class. But, I mean, wait a minute. Oh, okay. For a minute, I thought, I was looking down the board for a minute. I thought I hadn't taken Tarion Arnold, but I I did. We're good. Uh, <laughs> no, Cooper DeGene, I think... He could be the best cornerback out of this class, dude. Multi-use quarter, cornerback. He can play special teams. He's crazy at special teams. Was one of the best at Iowa. Uh, and guess what? He's a white cornerback. Okay, I, I couldn't couldn't keep it in. Couldn't couldn't hold it in, dude. Too hard not to say. Uh, but yeah, this will be the first cornerback white cornerback since Troy Apke, and then eventually they tr- switched him to safety. That's what they've done with most. White defensive backs. They have them at corner. They're like, I want to play corner. They're like, no, you're playing safety. They're like, why? It because you're... Wa-. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, Cooper DeGene, great player. Um, I mean, just just watch the tape. Dude's dude's an athletic demon. I, wish my, I want my Packers to get him. I think he'd be great. Play it with his former teammate. And uh, uh, what's his face? Lucas Van Ness. Um, uh, and then have him next to a guy like Nixon, that two quarter cornerbacks who can both play defense and do special teams. Like it'd be a match made in heaven, but I think the Colts, I think there's a high chance they take a guy like him. So send him over on to Indy and I think he'll play great in that Colts defense. Next up, you got the Seattle Seahawks at number 16, uh, I definitely think I've been I've been mocking this guy here for months now. I think it's easy that they take edge rusher. They've lost a lot of guys. Obviously, they just lost lost Bobby Wagner again. But um, I think I think defense has to be what they focus on. They've kind of struggled in that department. I mean, they haven't like they've allowed not many points, but they just they can't find like a number one guy on defense and you got to look to the edge rushers. And I think you go Jared first here out of Florida state, uh, was incredible on that dominant, uh, Florida state defense this past year. And I think you bring him over to Seattle and I think he continues that I uh, can get off the line easy and, uh, is a, just a hard nosed runner and, uh, can be a great fit in the Seattle Seahawks defense. Uh, they're trying to work that defense back to, what it once was, it's never going to be the Legion of Boom again. But if you bring in a guy like Jared Verse, you can possibly uh, get some of that old glory back. So give him Jared Verse. I've had I've had Jared Verse going to Seattle for a while. I don't know what it is. I just think he just he just gives off Seattle vibes. I don't know what to say. Um, I hope not. I hope they draft the worst player in the draft. I do. I do. I hope they draft. Uh, I hope they draft the the one punter guy or whatever. I that'd be awesome. No. Uh, next up, you got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, they could go a lot of ways here. They could go edge rusher, possibly. Obviously, they franchise tag Josh or no? Didn't they give Josh Allen a new contract? I think they did. I'm pretty sure they did. But. I don't know if they go that direction. Obviously, they got Darnell Savage uh, for the defensive back, so I don't know if they go there. Uh, they could go receiver, you know. They brought in Gabe Davis, but, like, is he or Christian Kirk going to be wide receiver one? We don't know. Um, but I think you got to get Trevor Lawrence some protection. That was clearly an issue last year. Um, and, uh, obviously, he just couldn't, couldn't stay healthy uh, and just deteriorated his play. So I think you got to get someone to protect him. And we're going to go 
Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon, the center, the only real, like, true number one center out of this class, I'd say. Uh, he has jumped up draft boards, and for very good reason. He's a, I think you could possibly, you don't even have to put him at center. You could put him pro- possibly at guard, uh, even even tackle. I think he's that good of a player. Uh, obviously, another Pac-12 player, so I've watched him for a few years, and has kept a guy like Bo Nix in good shape. So, uh, yeah, got to be, I think got to be Jackson Powers Johnson here. I think he could go even higher. I think NFL teams are really going to like a guy like Jackson Powers Johnson and uh, J- JPJ. Is that what we're calling him? JPJ? Okay, it works, I guess. No. <laughs> Um, yeah, got to get, got to get someone to protect T-Law, so I think you, I think you do that here with, with, uh, with Jackson, so give it to him. Next up, you got the Cincinnati Bengals at number 18, and I think there's a lot of options here. You could go, you you could continue to work on that offense line, just make sure Joe Bur- Burrow stays even more healthy. Obviously, he got hurt this past year. You could possibly go defense. But I think you got to take a guy who is pretty has f- has fallen in this draft, and I think he can possibly want to be possibly be the best player in this draft class. I think he's an incredible guy, um, incredible player, incredible athlete. He's getting comparisons to a lot of different tight ends, and that's of course Brock Bowers out of Georgia. I rambled way too long there, but you get the point. Brock Bowers, I mean, there's no... I don't even need to make an argument for it. I mean, obviously, going to go here with Cincy, and obviously they signed Mike Kosicki, but you get a number two guy like Brock Bowers, who I think easily could be a number one guy over Mike Kosicki, who is uh, definitely declining. And, um, yeah, Brock Bowers. There's not much words I need to say because he's he was on those back-to-back... Uh, Back to back, uh, Georgia teams, uh, that 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 they did, and uh, just was the number one weapon. Obviously, the only the only issue I think with him, uh, and I think is a reason he could easily fall, uh, is his just health issues. He had a lot of issues with that at the end of the year. Um, he just couldn't really stay healthy at Georgia. Um, obviously, that's kind of. Kind of why they couldn't really take down Bama, uh, in in the uh, in the what was it SEC championship, um, because he just wasn't on the field as much. But when he's on the field, dude, he is he's explosive. He's he, gosh, i com- people are always com- people are comparing him to Gronk. I mean, he can do both. He can block. He can he can run. He has speed on him. He's he's nuts. He's a versatile weapon, as you could say. Cal Pitts. Uh, no. Except he's except he's white. Oh, you didn't have to say it, Alex, but you, but you did. You did say it. All right, Bengals. Brock Bowers, get a weapon for Joey B. Next up, you got the Los Angeles Rams at number 19. Uh, Rams could go a lot of options here. I had quarterback for them for a while, um, but I just, I honestly, once again, I don't think Knicks and Penix are first-round guys yet. Um, but I feel like, oh, now I really, really think about this. This is a great pick. Guess who retired? Aaron Donald. He's an interior defense lineman. So I think you bring in an interior defensive lineman. Uh, definitely not nearly it was the way as a player as uh, Aaron Donald was. That's for sure. He's kind of the total opposite. Uh, not in a bad way, though. And that's Byron Murphy the second out of Texas, uh, Huckham Horns, uh, Byron Murphy, was uh, a great piece for that Texas team this past year, reason uh, they made it so far in their last year in the Big 12. Um, he's a big boy, uh, om- almost reminds me of a Quinnen Williams, uh, maybe not as shifty as Quinnen Williams was uh, coming out of the draft, but I think almost... I was trying to think of a comparison, but I really can't because he's a very unique player at his position. So Byron Murphy uh, going here to the Rams, I think, will be a great replacement for Donald and uh, can continue, you know, being a being a team under Sean McVay uh, can continue to be a great player. Next up, 
You got the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, obviously doing a lot this offseason, bringing in two quarterbacks. And their issue has really been just to get blocks. Uh, it has been like that for years. Um, so I think you grab an offensive tackle here as this tackle class is stacked. So I think you take Olam Vashanu out of Penn State. Everybody's saying it's Fashanu, but I'm gonna it's Fashanu. No, okay, he said Fashanu apparently said it's Fashanu, but that just doesn't sound right. Okay, Fashanu, Olam Fashanu. Okay, out of Penn State. Uh, bring in, bring in, in. Oh my gosh, I can't speak. I feel like this video has gone on way too long. I don't, I don't know how long it's been. Um, I don't know if it'll be as long as my last AC News. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, Fashanu, though, going to the Steelers, protecting Russell Wilson or Justin Fields. I think it'll be Justin Fields by week five because Russell Wilson got benched for Jarrett Stidham. Steelers Nation. Let's well. <laughs> Mr. Un, un, you gotta be, you gotta be unlimited. You got, you gotta be unlimited. All right, I gotta stop. Uh, but I think, I think Vashon is a great player. I think I had him in top ten, top five range when the whole mock draft scene started this year. Um, he has fallen down a bit, but I think he can still be a great player. Um, is very shifty for a a big guy like him. He's a big, big boy. Um, big boy, but, uh, I think if he's under a Mike Tomlin team, I think he can be very unlimited. <laughs> I didn't have to do that. Um, yeah, Fashanu. I don't care if it's Fashanu. I'm saying Fashanu and you can sue me. We'll see how Roger says it. We'll, we'll see. Um, next up, you got the Miami Dolphins. Uh, obviously they had a lot of issues, uh, with, their edge rushers staying healthy this past year. I mean, they they couldn't have anyone stay healthy. You had Bradley Chubb who went down. You had Jalen Phillips went down, and then they lost Ginkle this off season. They just they've had a they can't catch a break. Um, you know, Jalen Phillips he was he was having a great year before uh before he went out in the Jets game, but uh. I think you bring in, I think, pro- yeah, you bring in a former teammate of his, uh, I think. I don't know if he was a former teammate. Probably, maybe. I don't know if the timeline adds up, but uh, you bring in a former LSU guy, or not former LSU guy, you bring in an LSU guy, and that's Leatu Latu out of L- or U- UCLA. Did I say LSU? I said LSU. Oh, my God, I'm stupid. Yeah, Leatu Latu, edge rusher out of UCLA. Another Pac-12 guy here. Um, is honestly, legitimately, I think he's the exact same player that Jalen Phillips was uh, at Miami. Uh, I think he's, honestly, I'd say he's even more explosive. I mean, if you want a great ta- tape to watch, watch the uh, watch the WSU game. Yeah, don't remind me. I'm reminding myself. <laughs> He made he made Cam Ward's life a living hell that day, um, and I think he if he goes to the Dolphins, he can make Josh Allen's life a living hell. Um, him and Phillips on opposite sides, dude. Whoo, that'd be disgusting. Uh, they just gotta stay healthy, um, and I think that was I think that's Latu's an, another one of his big issues. He just couldn't stay healthy this past year. He's fallen. He's falling down draft boards. I could see him even falling out of the first round. Uh, but if he doesn't, I think Miami's a perfect spot for him. So give him, give him Leatu Latu. Uh, next up at 22, you have the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, their big issue this past season was defensive backs. They they just kept getting burned by everyone. I just, just can't explain it. James Bradbury, I think they got rid of him because he sucked. Uh, they did bra- bring back C.J. Gardner Johnson. They did bring back. They did bring back Chauncey. But uh, yeah, it's it's not looking great there in Eagles Town. And if they they're gonna bring in a new defensive coordinator, obviously, I think you got to get a serious guy back there. And I think you got to bring in. The best cornerback in this draft class, in my humble opinion. I think in a lot of people's opinions. I don't know how he fell this far. Don't ask me. I made this mock draft during school one day. Don't ask me. I was bored, okay? 
Um, but this is my final mock draft, so know your role and shut your mouth. Give them Terry and Arnold out of Alabama. Um, you know, was was not even the number one cornerback on his team for a while, as a lot more people like Kool-Aid McKinstry. But he had an incredible year at Bama. Uh, you know, one of the reasons that Bama made it as far as they did, because uh, their defensive backs were crazy this year, and Kool-Aid just couldn't stay healthy, and Terry and Arnold was a beast. He was incredible. Um, so you bring in a guy like Terry and Arnold to the Philadelphia Eagles, and I think uh, Philly will still be in that playoff race um, if they continue to improve this defense that they had struggles with last year. So, yeah, Philly, Terry and Arnold, great player. Uh, next up, you got the Minnesota Vikings again. This pick was traded with another team. I think this was the Browns team. The Browns pick, I think. Maybe. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. This is a Browns pick. Pretty positive. Pretty, pretty positively positive. I don't know what player it would have been. Like, I don't know how they got this pick. I, yeah. Because the Browns don't have a first-round pick. And I'm looking where it's at. They're all next to wild card teams, and then the next divisional. Like, yeah, it ha- it has to be the Browns pick, but I don't know how they got it. Either way, the Vikings. You bring in JJ McCarthy, of course. You gotta get someone to protect him because the Vikings they've had struggles with protecting their quarterback. We saw last year with Kirk Thuggins. So you bring in another Alabama guy, and you get JC Latham, um, a great player here here out of Bama. Uh, kept kept uh Jalen Jalen uh why can't I remember his name what it's Jalen something right it's J- I want to say it's Jalen Mills but that's when I think Jalen Mills I think for some odd reason <sighs> Jalen Milrow I knew it was Mills something it got me th- see I haven't paid attention to football in months so you can fight me okay no, uh, kept him, uh, kept him healthy all year. So you bring in a guy like J.C. Latham, so who I even see more as a guard than a tackle, just because he's a bigger dude. So I think if you put him at guard, I think he'll be even better. Protect those interiors. But you have him on the outside. We know J.J. likes to scramble out, so bring in a guy like him can keep him healthy, can keep him safe. So Vikings taking J.C. Latham. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Next up. You have the Dallas Cowboys at 24. Um an issue they had an issue they they really had uh during this past season was keeping uh I mean, I wouldn't say that Dak Dak obviously stayed healthy all year, but he just wasn't really getting any protection. Uh although Dak still played great. Uh but obviously, the big thing, they lost Tyran Smith. They lost or Tyron Smith, Tyron Smith, Tyron, Tyron, Tyron Smith to the Jets, of course, um, and then have continued to lo- lose so many guys on that offense line that they had forever. So I think you bring in uh, Amarius Mims out of Georgia, uh, just an incredible guy, just an incredible guy. He's such a nice dude. I know him personally. No, I don't. <laughs> I need to get through this mock draft, dude. This is killing me. All right. Marius Mims, I mean, not much else to say. I mean, he's a great player. Uh, was part of the reason why uh, Stetson Bennett, you know, had so much protection in college, except from when it came to uh, the police. <laughs> that Oh, that joke, joke set itself up. Um, but yeah, Marius Mims. Give it to the Cowboys. And we know they like their, their offense alignment. I think he's a great one there for the Cowboys. Next up, we get a little close to home here as we go to the Green Bay Packers at number 25. Whew. I'm so excited as a Packers fan, this 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 draft class, because, oh, I, there's a lot of guys I like. We could go tackle. We could still go cornerback. I think there's a high chance we go cornerback, uh, honestly, you know. I think we. I think there's an easy chance we go defensive back either way. <sighs> There's a lot of guys I like. <clears throat> I think we... A guy I've liked for a while for us was Graham Barton. Uh, 
because he reminded me of an Elton Jenkins who can move across the line, and we need offensive linemen. But I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go defensive back. He's not far from Green Bay. Give me Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota. Um, safety. Um, he was a great player at Minnesota, dude. Uh, oh, my God. My voice is breaking. I, I've, I feel like I've been talking for an hour here. I probably have. Um, I don't know. <sighs> Packers. Tyler Newbin. Obviously, we lost uh, Darnell Savage. We did get, though, we did get uh, Xavier McKinney X uh, from the Giants, of course. But if we bring in a second safety, because obviously we lost Jonathan Owens and a couple other guys alongside Savage. But if we get a second safety next to Xavier McKinney, ooh, this defensive core is going to look disgusting. So I think you bring in a guy like Newbin who is familiar with a Jeff Halfley defense. Um, I think I think this Packers defensive de- defensive back core will just look incredible next year, and that's that's really been the issue of Green Bay. We play so off of receivers sometimes, but that's because Joe Barry sucks at his job. But now we got Jeff Halfley, and hopefully. Everything will be fine because the Packers can't get a good defense coordinator if it slapped them in the face. But hopefully it'll be better this year because if we get a guy like Newbin or if we get even a cornerback, because there's a lot of great cornerbacks still left. Nate Wiggins, how did he fall the way down here? I don't know. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry, there's some great players. Um, So if we get one of those guys or even edge rusher, honestly, uh, get some more pressure on the quarterback, I'd I'd be happy. And this defense could look great next year. Because that's really what I'm focused on, honestly. Besides offensive line, I'm not really worried about the offense because the offense showed how good it can be. So, give us give us Tyler Newbin. Nice sub. You got that Tampa Bay back in years. Um, I think you got to go offensive line here. Uh, they obviously drafted Cody Mock last year. But that really didn't work out too well. He he didn't play great at all. Um, so I think you bring in another guy. A guy who I was just talking about, actually. That's Graham Barton out of Duke. Uh he's an incredible offensive lineman. I think I think he honestly is gonna fly under the radar. I think he can be one of the best. He like I said, he can move across the line. He can play guard. He can play center if you want to. He can play offensive tackle. Obviously that's what they have him listed as. But you get Baker Mayfield some protection, and uh, this Bucks offense could continue to look great going into next year. So, got to give them Graham, Graham Barton out of Duke. <clears throat> oh, my God. All right. A few more picks, kind of. We're at 27 here with the Arizona Cardinals. They have another pick. This pick was traded from the, uh, from the uh, uh, Texans. Was this still from the DeAndre Hopkins trade? There's no way, right? Or is there another guy? Or is there another guy they traded? No, this might be the D Hop trade. Gosh, that was forever ago. What are the Texans? Okay, I can't say what are the Texans doing. We were saying what are the Texans doing, but now we understand. Okay, um, but no, uh, Cardinals. I think at this spot, this is a guy who they 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 could have got a while ago, and that's. Uh, cornerback Nate Wiggins out of Clemson. I think, I don't know how I had Nate Wiggins falling this far. I'm going to keep it a book with you. I think he's a great player. I think either him or Cooper DeGene at, uh, at 15 and one of them, if one of them don't get picked there, the other will fall, I think. Um, so I, that's the situation I have here. And, uh, Nate Wiggins falling here to the Cardinals. Uh, has been a great player for that Clemson defense, and I think can continue here with the Cardinals. Obviously, they've they've had struggles all over the board. Offense, defense, you get it, you get the point. Um, but uh, yeah, give them give them Nate Wiggins. Next up, you got the Buffalo Bills. Uh, gosh, they've they've lost everything this off season. Damn near everything. Their wide receiver one right now is. Sh- uh, uh, what's his name? K- K- Khalil Shakir? Yeah. Khalil Shakir is their number one guy. Not great, Bob. So I think you got to go wide receiver here. And I think you go Adonai Mitchell out of Texas. I think I love the prospect of Adonai Mitchell. I think he's a great player. Uh, played great with, uh, uh, 
What's his name? Oh, my God. I can't remember anybody's names. What is the issue? Who is Texas quarterback? Oh, my. Not Archie Manning. That's for sure. Um, Or not Arch. I said Archie. Arch Manning. Um, Quinn Ewers. Gosh, I'm so stupid. But no. Adonai Mitchell. A uh, great player. Obviously, his teammate, uh, Xavier Worthy, who ran and who broke the record for the four-yard dash. But I don't know if Worthy goes round one. But I think there's a high chance that Mitchell goes round round one easily. And Bills getting a guy like him to pair with Josh Allen, I think the Bills are right back in shape where they need to be. Um, because a guy like Josh Allen, he's a great quarterback. He can make anyone good, in my opinion. Uh, I love Josh Allen. This Joshy Poo, love you. Sorry, I'm a D one uh, Josh Allen Glazer. You heard it here first, folks. Um, probably my favorite quarterback outside uh, Jordan Love. I said it. I said it. Actually, Gardner Mitchell, obviously. But he's three. He's three. But no, Adonai Mitchell, great player, has explosive burst off the line, uh, can route any cornerback up. So I think Bills, easy pick here off, obviously losing Gabe Davis. And then trading Stephon Diggs. Why? Why? Why would you do that? I get why, but why? Now you got at 29 the Detroit Lions. Uh, Lions could go a couple ways here. I think it's easy. For them to go cornerback, though, I think it's really easy for them to go cornerback. Obviously, they lost C.J. Garner-Johnson, and then they, in the playoffs, one of their cornerbacks were just getting just toasted. Cam Sutton, right? Yeah, Cam Sutton was just getting burnt. So I think there's a high chance they go cornerback here, and I think you go that Alabama number two guy, and then I think you go Kool Aid McKinstry, one of the best names ever. Um, obviously, though, Kool Aid McKinstry out of Alabama uh, was, gosh, I mean, a year ago, going into the to the twenty four twenty, oh my gosh, to twenty twenty four draft, he was like, oh, this guy's a top five pick. Obviously, that's not panned out that way for obvious reasons, though. He just couldn't really stay healthy. He wasn't playing as well as he was in twenty twenty two. But I think he can still be a great player for any team he goes to. And getting him on a Dan Campbell team just makes sense to me. So, Lions, Kool-Aid, it's a match made in heaven. Now you got the Baltimore Ravens at number 30. Oh my gosh, we're almost there. We're almost there. Um, you, yeah, Ravens. Yeah. Um, they had a hard time protecting, uh, protecting Lamar Jackson in the playoffs, dude. They, they, they did. And when I say the playoffs, I mean really AFC Championship. Um, all those Chiefs were just getting after him, and he couldn't make plays. So I think you go offensive line here because, once again, stacked offensive line class. Stacked, absolutely, absolutely stacked. So I think you go Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. Uh, we start to get in the range here where I think a lot of these guys, I doubt they'll even be in the first round because – once you get in later of the first back half of the first round, they're like they're starting to take like guys out of like the second, even third that you think. But you know we can't really say anything about it because they're the NFL teams. They're the ones that really know how these knows how these players are, how they are like in real life, obviously, and how uh, how well they really are of a player because we just can't base it behind the screens. So, yeah, Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. Uh, is a great, great offensive line in there. <clears throat> Obviously, Oklahoma's quarterback. I, I'm forgetting everybody's names. But he'll be a great player. and He'll be incredible next year. Probably a Heisman Heisman caliber. Oh, my God. What's Dylan Gabriel? Uh, yeah, Dylan Gabriel. That's right. Gosh, I can't remember anything. But no, it was great for them this past season with Dylan and uh, can continue it here with an incredible guy like Lamar. And obviously, you bring in Derrick Henry. You need someone to protect the old man running back, Derrick Henry. So I think Guyton has to be the one. Now, you got the San Francisco 49ers at pick 31. Uh, Niners, obviously, they had a struggle defending the receivers for the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I mean, they didn't have a struggle, but they kind of had a struggle. And they definitely did in the NFC Championship. 
they had the one... Gosh, I really can't remember anyone's names. It's a problem. Um, uh, gosh. Wow, okay, you're just not even going to let me see it. Just not even going to let me see it. Load. Load, chat. The one quarterback they had, though. Um... Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Uh, Ambry Thomas, that's right. Ambry Thomas was just bad, dude. He was so bad in the playoffs. So I think you need to be bring in a cornerback when this cornerback class is stacked. And I think you bring in Kamari Lassiter out of Georgia. Uh, another one of those great pieces from an amazing team like Georgia. And I think you bring him in to this 49ers defense, and this defense just continues to get better and better and better. And once uh, uh, Hufanga comes back at safety, this uh, 49ers defensive backs will just be even better. So you got to replace a guy like Ambry Thomas because he sucked. He was terrible. And Traverius Ward has a, had a really disappointing playoffs. He did. He did. He was great in the season, but he just didn't live up to expectations. You got to get another guy in there, and I'm really high on Kamari Lasseter, so bring in him and uh, makes things just even better. All right, close it out. Last pick of the first round. Oh my gosh, I don't know how long this video has been going for. I should. I always gotta need to check the time when I start and then when I finish. Um, all right, Kansas City Chiefs, of course, Super Bowl champs. Um, they, <sighs> you know, you could go receiver here. You could be fun and take the four-yard dash man himself, Xavier Worthy, because we know they struggled with receiver. That's why they brought in Hollywood Brown. But uh, I think their most under-the-radar issue last year was the penalties they took. Dude, oh, it was terrible. They just jumped off the line every time. Freaking, why? oh, I can't even remember his. There's no way. It was such a big story, and I don't remember their names. There was multiple guys. Um, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. <sighs> Trey Smith, obviously, right guard. He wasn't great, but... Oh, is he not even on the team anymore? Oh, my God, he's. I don't even think he's on the team. Uh, Jawan Taylor, oh my god. It it started from game one. Jawan Taylor was just like five yards back from the rest of the offense line. Like, what are you doing? You need someone else in there. And I think you grab a guy like Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. Offensive tackle, of course. Another Pac-12 guy who was great this season. And I think you could take a couple guys here. Uh, but I think Jordan Morgan has to be the fit. Um, keep Patrick Mahomes... Protected, of course. Uh, Mahomes kind of dealt with some injury issues, not as much as he did the season before. But you can't be having guys jump off sides, false start every single play. Like, dude, and Jawan Taylor, he'd get away with half of the penalties. Bro probably was five yards to five to, oh my gosh. He was probably false starting and way farther back from his offensive line like, the entire of that first game of the season against the Lions. It was bad, dude. So you got to bring in someone, and you got to bring in Jordan Morgan. All right, that's it. Oh, my gosh, that video took way too long. Um, That's that's going to do it. Um, I think, uh, you know, I'm never right. Nobody's ever right with the NFL draft because it's the NFL draft, and you never know what can happen. But I'm so excited for it either way. Uh, I'm excited for this class, see how everything shapes out, see who goes where. So that's really going to be it for this AC News. I know it's not really an AC News. It's just a mock draft. You you get the point. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Please comment, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when I post a new video. Bye, guys. It's all about